Clytus, I'm bored. What plaything can you offer me today? An obscure channel on the web, your majesty. The viewers refer to it as reading movies. I like to play with things a while before annihilation. Pathetic earthlings! Who can save you now? Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Today I have Dino De Laurentiis' camp fest of a film called Flash Gordon, where I will list the key differences in this book from the film. This film is probably more famous for its soundtrack than its content, and recently brought back to today's audience by the film Ted, starring Mark Wahlberg. This novelisation is written by Arthur Byron Cover, and is to date his only novelisation. He is a science fiction writer and screenwriter for some 80s cartoons episodes, including Transformers, Defenders of the Earth, The Real Ghostbusters and Starcom. You'll have to excuse my poor copy. I have had it a number of years and bought it early in the days of online purchases. One of my pet hates is for sellers' dishonesty by not listing books as ex-library, when they clearly are and they're covered in stamps. Or worse, as in this case, the price is in an indelible pen. So now I will list some of the differences I found when reading this book, and so I will not bore you with any of the plot, as I'll assume that you already know this. The opening scene of Ming and Clytus examining Earth is longer. We get an interesting alien analysis of Earth from the Mongian point of view. This is where the book starts to show some of its political nature. There is a rant about corporatism by Clytus. Cover appears to add his own politics in what is perhaps a little clunky and on the nose in this book. And I would go as far as to say that it is rather out of place. The three main characters get some backstory, that is, Flash, Dale and Zarkov. Flash is revealed to be an orphan from a young age, and is rather New Age hippie-ish in outlook compared to the final shooting script. It is hard to tell if Cover added this in, or whether it was the work of the uh, screenwriter Lorenzo Semple Jr. We also get a measure of Zarkov's background from the memory flashbacks, and it is also confirmed here in the book. And this is where the book starts to deviate. Arthur Byron Cover, for some weird reason, chooses to make Dale a little bit, well, loose and sexually liberal. It is revealed that she enjoyed swinging and uh, group sessions, plus relationships with a few country boys before we see her getting on the plane at the beginning of the film. Now, I'm no prude, but the film was rated a PG, and this book would have been read by quite a few children at the time. But, oh well. Arthur Byron Cover had been granted a great deal of freedom in writing this book compared to other novelisation authors. There is plenty of extra dialogue. From what I can tell, using the only script that I could find, this book has had a lot added. Other Mongian races are mentioned as well, including the Mud People, Slime People, plus more about the plight of the Lizard People we see briefly in the film. The clothes of the characters are described vividly, and they match the costumes from the film very well, which indicates that Byron Cover was either shown designs during writing, or that he pumped out this book in a short space of time, shortly after a release print of the movie. The Hawkman, named Biro, is described as having white hair and plumage to his wings, due to his old age. It is also mentioned that the Hawkmen fear the dark, as well as artificial light. It also explains the Mongian culture of offering daughters to Ming, with those disobeying or executed. In the book, Voltan loses his 12-year-old daughter to Ming, who was taken as tribute, after it was found that he did indeed steal the ice crystal of Phrygia from Barin. It is also mentioned that Flash, Zarkov and Dale had been programmed via Mongian technology by Clytus, whilst they were on the shuttle during their arrival, so that they could understand the Mongian language. We also learn that Ming's power allows him to control people of Earth. We also get a greater insight into the power play for Ming's favour between rivals Clytus and General Kala, and it is much more prominent in the uh, dialogue of the text. Also, the title of Ming the Merciless was coined by Dale herself. Ming liked it so much that he took the title for himself, 
and noted that earthlings have a gift for propaganda, and he intends to hire one for his empire. The state of Mongo is also better explained in the book, after Flash's football fight, uh, with the effect on other Mongians and how his presence stoked up a rebellion against Ming. Another weird extra is Ming's relationship with his daughter Aura is much more boldly stated than what we get in the film. Too much so for my liking, or probably anyone else's, if you get what I mean. And we're also treated to a little bit of science. The time dilation caused by Mongo's proximity to a black hole is mentioned during the story's narrative, with time passing much quicker on Earth than on Mongo. There is plenty of character thoughts in this book, even if they do not really match what we saw in the final cut of the film. But Kova does a good job of reminding the reader that Mongo is a different culture to the norms of Earth. The book also mentions that the character of Fico, played by Richard O'Brien, also has pointed canine teeth. The trial of the wood beast ritual rules are also thoroughly explained. The story in the book is slower and better played out than what we get in the movie. What is notable about the book is the creative freedom that Kova is given in expanding the script. As I mentioned earlier, this is quite rare, and I would normally approve of such an addition. However, he took the characters probably a little bit too far from the film version and the scripts that I have read. And once again, we are threatened with a Hollywood remake. At one point, Matthew Vaughan was attached to direct this remake. In the past, he had directed a film called Layer Cake, which I thought interesting as Layer Cake featured the British actor George Harris who also had a small role in Flash Gordon as Prince Thun of Adentia. Now it's been proposed that it will be a animated film, which was first proposed by uh, Taika Waititi. Waititi, I think, could do a very good campy homage to the 1980 film, but it is now looking like he's going to be the writer instead of the director, with John Davis producing it. It would be interesting to see what Hollywood provides, but my gosh, it would be nice if they left the classics alone. Well, thanks for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe, and maybe share the video online. Please also check out my other videos as well. Thank you, and goodbye.